Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in this Rick Game Telecom video, we're going to be discussing and analysing tech news, which, as usual, has popped up over the past 24 or so hours. That's right, this is the second video from me today, because, quite frankly, there is a lot of news. But this one is going to be very Intel-focused. We're going to be first starting out with a new NAND-based Intel SSD, that is both the 760p and the 660p, because we have the specifications which have leaked online. Isn't that just spiffy? Then we're going to move over to Intel, because some news has emerged that, unsurprisingly, the company are focused on new graphics chips, and indeed this look to be the creation of... Raja Kadori, and these will indeed be discrete GPUs. But we're going to start things out, as I just mentioned, with NAND. So this comes to us from a website by the name of Autobuy, which is a, a shop. And now we've also got further confirmation from TigerDirect.com. I uh, will also give credit to Tom's Hardware, who originally found this. And pricing looks to be fairly competitive, but I'll go into that in just a second. We'll start things out, as I mentioned, with the actual um, uh, SSDs. So we're looking here at capacities of the 660 of 512 gigabytes, one terabyte and finally two terabytes, or with the 760p, 128 gigabytes, 256 gigabytes, 512 gigabytes, one terabyte, or finally two terabytes. It's, of course, a 64-layer TLC 3D NAND. Uh, in the case of the um, the 660, it's a QLC 3D NAND. Power requirements are just 0 0.01 watts for both, and idle power is almost identical. The random, let's face it, this is the part you really care about, the random read speeds and all that stuff. Well, with the 760, all these figures I'm going to read are for the 760, up to 350,000 slash 280,000, that's for read and write respectively. For the sub sequential read, and this is in megabytes, 3200 slash 1600 for read and write respectively. For the 660p, 150,000, 150,000. So, no, I didn't stutter there. That means read and write IOPS are identical, but the subsequential read speed and write speed are slightly different. Well, not slightly different, quite a bit different. 1800 slash 1100, which is still very competitive, to be honest with you. And now you're going to say, okay, well, golly gosh, what about the prices? Well, not all of these prices may be accurate, obviously. Some of these might be a placeholder, but according to Tom Tell, where they feel pretty confident about it, the 760 512 uh, gigabyte is going to be around 5900 yuan, which is 917, but they did find some uh, of the 2 terabyte, which is going to be 800 and uh, 892.99 US dollars and the cheapest one which is going to be 128 gigabytes is only going to be 96 US dollars so once again these drives are pretty competitive indeed in terms of pricing and the performance is also fairly impressive but now let's face it the big piece of news that I'm sure everyone wants to read here is Intel and their discrete graphics chips and this is going to Probably shook no one when I say that they're starting their work. Now, this is for generations 12 and 13. And once again, these are going to be their own discrete GPU. So I just want to clarify, this is not going to be Vega. This is not going to be AMD, you know, providing Intel the chips. It instead is going to be the company designing its own chips. And this is basically for post-Canon Lake. Now, as you are probably aware, back in... In late 2017, Intel announced that Raja Kodori, who had previously, of course, served at AMD, had joined them and will be doing so to develop integrated and discrete graphics solutions for their particular company. So it wasn't too surprising that eventually we would hear rumours about what he was working on or what Intel were working on, I suppose is better worded. And there are two GPUs which he is working on or they are working on. Uh, this information comes to us from Ashraf Azza. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly. Probably not, let's just be honest. But he is from the Motley Fool. Now there's no details about the specifications, so if you want me to tell you the teraflops and the clock speeds, unfortunately I cannot do that, but what we can do is some speculation on what is going to be happening. So Intel's generation 13 GPU is based on uh sorry, 
Generation 13 based GPU is going to be codenamed Jupiter Sound. It's a very Intel name, let's just be honest. And the 12th generation discrete GPU is going to be codenamed Arctic Sound, and these will be connecting directly to the Intel processors via EMIB. So that's almost identical to how the solutions are currently working with the 8th generation, which, as you're probably aware, utilizes the RX Vega M. Uh, solution. And I'll just go back a little bit. The first customer mobile solution of Vega is also utilizing HBM2 and it uses that with a power sharing solution and Intel's EMIB to produce a very very impressive amount of performance especially given the power um, the power levels that this thing consumes. It's only 65 or 100 watts depending obviously on the performance level that you're going with. That's with 4 gigabytes of HBM memory and 1024 bit interface which is very impressive to be honest. I mean the sheer amount of performance you've got it way out see, exceeds excuse me the base ps4 model and quite frankly is it, it, it's just very impressive but there's a couple of questions one what memory is it going to be using well let's just be honest there's absolutely no reason whatsoever for them to go with let's say gddr6 i think we can all agree that that doesn't make any lick of sense at all i refer right now to a solution which is going to be very similar the emib design so most likely this is going to be a case of HBM3 uh, because it, by this time uh, the, these cards are available, this solution is available, HBM3 is the only logical option. I mean technically it could be HBM4 but I don't think we're going to be that far into the future. Maybe, maybe. But And I don't think there's going to be another memory unless Intel or someone else is working on something super secret. So I'm going to make the assumption that we're going to be seeing X amount of bandwidth with HBM3, most likely, of course, that's going to be double the amount of bandwidth, which is going to be very impressive, possibly a 4 or an 8 gigabyte memory solution, which by that point would also make a great deal of sense. In terms of performance level, that's where it gets a lot harder to predict. I mean, most likely we're going to be looking at possibly a 7 or a 10 nm process, but obviously it also depends on how far Intel are along with this and also how confident they feel with the GPU. This is particularly true on the first generation of this, which is the 12th. Remember, there's two which are being designed. There's the Arctic and then there's Jupiter, both are sound. When it comes to the Arctic, they are probably going to be more tentative. Now, I'm not sure whether we can also have a generational difference. For example, uh, I'll use Vega because it's the simplest one. As you're probably aware, there's Vega at the moment, which is using 14nm, but it's been confirmed by AMD that they're working on a 7nm NM variant of Vega, if I can speak. The 7nm possibly might have a tweak here or there, but just like Ryzen and the 12nm LPP. So basically the question is, are we going to be seeing a situation like that? Or are we going to be seeing a completely different architecture with a completely different um, design entirely? Well, most likely the answer is, of course, it's going to be a tweaked variant of the architecture. Or the other possibility is, one, the Arctic is going to be smaller. It's going to be, you know, designed once again primarily for integration of the um, next generation of Intel processors. And when it comes to Jupiter, it's possible that that is going to be a much bigger GPU. It's going to have a vast amount more shaders. It's going to have greatly uh, increased amounts of memory bandwidth, possibly uh, even with GDDR6 variants or whatever we have available at that particular time. And possibly that we're going to be uh, aiming to be introduced to the data center after all. That would make a great deal of sense, right? Intel would probably like to have a competitive solution, much like AMD, where they can have Vega and they can have a epic CPU, if you were to go that route, with AMD. And even taking AMD out of the equation, Intel must be thinking to themselves, well, gee, look at all the cash that NVIDIA are making. And all you have to do is look at every single conference that AMD, I'm sorry, that NVIDIA have ever run, and you can just see the dollar signs must be appearing in Intel's eyes, because it's like, while the CPU is great for tasks which, you know, code is jumping all over the place, when you have just the GPU running uh, certain instructions where it just follows in order, 
and it doesn't have to make calculations of like, okay, go from this task to this task to this task to this task and start doing like predictions and branches and all that stuff. The GPU is just playing faster and does so with parallelism of massive proportions because once again, it's got thousands essentially of little CPU cores. And yes, they're not quite CPU cores, but you know what I mean, handling the task. So basically, the GPU is great for some tasks, the CPU is great for other tasks, so Intel obviously want to be able to offer both to end users or clients. Not to mention the fact that the gaming market is also becoming bigger and bigger and bigger on the, on the, on the PC side of things and also, of course, console side of things. So, let's say the PlayStation 5 or PlayStation 6 or whatever, Intel could be vying, potentially for a contract with Sony or perhaps a contract with Microsoft. Don't forget the original Xbox was using essentially a Pentium 3 slash Intel um, Celeron hybrid. And yes, it was using a GeForce a graphics card. Well, yeah. So it's going to be a very interesting couple of months uh, to see how the rumors shape up. And longer than that, it's going to be a very interesting several years. So I wouldn't be surprised if when we see the first variant of this, once again, the Arctic, it's probably going to be using HBM3 at a guess. Um, and obviously it's going to put out considerably more performance than what the current generation does. But what we see in the final terms, what type of performance we're going to have, I, I do think Intel are really in this to play. And I think it's going to be for the mobile solutions, but I also definitely feel it's going to be for desktop solutions and I definitely think they're aiming for HPC slash the server slash data market because let's just be honest it's very lucrative with all of that said hopefully you've enjoyed the video I'll see you soon take care bye for now